Hello guys. Welcome back to the RMD Tech channel. It's been a while since I was last here, but today we're looking at a gaming chair from a company called Cyber. Cyber. It's not the best name because I've got no idea how to pronounce it, but I'm going to go with Cyber because it's a gaming chair, right? So I assume Cyber, like cool, Cyber, yeah, right? That's my assumption. So I'm gonna go with Cyber. But these guys make chairs, not names. So hopefully their chair making skills far outstrip their naming skills. So how about I go get some scissors and we can get this open, shall we? Right, two seconds. Whew. I'm a bit out of breath after that. But anyway, let's line this down, shall we? Because this is a big heavy boy. All right. Now, when they messaged me and said, do you want to review our chair? They originally gave me two options. They said, do you want it pre-assembled or do you want to assemble it yourself? And I thought you guys would want to see it assembled. <laughs> so I'm doing this for you. And tell you what, packing materials so far, I'm quite impressed. This is a nice, thick, sturdy cardboard. Oh, here we go. Right, okay. I hope this comes with instructions. Um, because I don't know how to build a chair. Ah. Speak of the devil. Please scan here to watch how to assemble your Cyber SI1 chair. Well, if anyone at home wants to give that a scan, there's your opportunity. So you can scan the QR code if you're looking for instructions prior to actually purchasing to see how, much, how difficult it is. I was kind of hoping they'd print the instructions for me because... Oh my God, that... Oh. So let's get all of these parts out. Oh. Oh. I haven't seen any screws. <laughs> Are there screws in here somewhere? Ah, actually. Yeah, there's something in here before I throw that away. Ah, armrest. You got an armrest. Look at that. Aha, there we go. There's all those screws I was talking about. See, we do have them. And we've even got color matched washers. Guys, that's so cute. Oh, I love that. That's a great touch. I think we're ready to build a chair. Uh, where do we want to start? First impressions here though, guys, my God. All right, I don't know, can you see the base here? So we've got a nice two-tone fabric base. We've got yellow accents on the side. Looks actually really nice, but the feel of it, that is a really nice thick sponge material. You can normally tell on a chair just by your first touch how good quality the foam is and how comfortable it's gonna be, purely just from feeling the sort of foam on the base and the back. But I feel like this is one of those bases that's just gonna go for years and years and like still be spongy spring back. And yeah, yeah. I'm really unfit, <laughs> really out of breath. I don't normally do this much talking, believe it or not. So you have to bear with me. I don't know what this is. I guess that's to hide some sort of mechanism. Um, I'm starting to think maybe the instructions are a good idea. Now, annoyingly, right, because my office, you can't tell it from where I'm sat at the moment, I'm sat in my office. That wall right there is a bright bloody blue. So they don't do a blue color, which is really annoying. They do black, they do red. I think they do like a gray white color. Don't quote me on that. Um, and they do this yellow. Um, and I would have gone with blue, but they, for some reason they don't do blue, which I thought was strange. I feel like blue would have been a really popular color. Cool, look at that. Look at the shape on that. I mean, that's some, oh, wow. Yeah, so as I was saying about with the base, right? We've got that same foam material on the back here, really spongy, but it's because of the curve, it's got a nice sort of lumbar support. I don't know if it's adjustable. I guess we'll find out later. So how do we attach the back to the base? Now that is the question, isn't it? Um, I'm going <laughs> to read the instructions because I've got no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so immediately I've gone wrong. <laughs> immediately I've done the wrong thing. Okay, so the first step it looks like is to get 
the backrest and slide our base onto it. Oh, actually, right, tip for your instruction video, Cyber. Let's include all the steps for it, shall we, please? Because apparently this weird plastic thingy, this doohick, needs to go on here. The video doesn't show me how to do that. So we've got some holes to line up and some bolts to do. So let's take our tool bag here. This is all comes with the chair, so it comes with a little Allen key. Nice and includes one. Doing this. It's the sort of thing that's nice to have a friend to do this. I do have some friends. And I said to my fiance, I said, do you want to come help me with this? You could sort of hold the camera for me, make sure it's all in focus and stuff like that. It'd be great, we'd have some fun together. And she said, nah, I'd rather clean the house. So just shows how much my company's worth, doesn't it? We just need to get this lined up. Oh, is that in? That's what she said. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. It's starting to resemble a chair. And do you know what? Once you know what you're doing, it's actually really easy. So this entire process is super duper easy. Yep. Yeah, that's done. Yeah, that's that seems to be on there pretty sturdy. Right, let's uh, get our handy dandy video guide back up. Oh. Guys, I've, I've made a mistake. <laughs> right, we're gonna redo this. I'm gonna show you what I've done wrong. Do you see this disc here? This is supposed to go on top of this bracket. This bracket tucks behind, so I clearly haven't attached this properly. So let's give that a second try. We'll try that again, shall we? Oh yeah, and that feels much better now. That's definitely the way to go. Don't need those. Don't need those. That is a chair base. Hey, look at me go. I built a chair. Well, built two parts of a chair anyway. Take it there. Nice and easy. And then we ram it in here. Let's slide the base on. Okay, that's very easy. And then we'll... Oh my God. Oh. So I think this one goes on this side. That, that's nice and easy. Goes on this side. So, oh, I've only gone and built a chair. How long did that take? Maybe five, ten minutes? Ooh, there you go. I don't know how it works yet, so we'll sit with it like this. Ooh. First impressions though, this is nice. This is very nice. Let me have a play around with it and I'll uh, get back to you. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> so despite wearing basically the exact same outfit, it's actually been about one month since that last clip, which has given me plenty of time to decide whether or not I like the Cyber SI1 gaming chair and what's good and what's bad about it. If I had to summarize it in one sentence, I'd probably say it's really good out of the box, which is a good thing because you can't adjust it particularly much. Let me show you what I mean. This here is the lumbar support. And if you look on this side, and then take a look on the other side, you might notice something. There's not really any way of adjusting it. How it comes out of the factory is what you're stuck with. And that might be a deal breaker for some, but before you click off the video, just hear me out. Because this is actually exactly how I would configure the lumbar support if it were adjustable. It protrudes enough to stop me from sort of sliding down the chair into bad angles where I'm gonna like do damage to my back, but not so much that it feels like it's awkwardly sticking into my back and like making it uncomfortable. It's kind of sensibly configured, which is really nice. It's, it's almost like, believe it or not, they thought about this when they were building the chair. So I can't mark them down too badly for not including adjustable lumbar support because it is already in a really ergonomic and comfortable configuration. Next up is the tilt. And luckily you've got four levels of tilt available to you, starting with this. This is as far back as the chair goes. So definitely not anywhere near a 180 degree lying flat back as you get with some chairs. But frankly, that's a bit excessive. Who's doing that in a chair? Don't get in bed, that's what beds are for. You've got four levels available to you, right? So this is as far back as it goes, this is level four. If I lean forwards, I can go to level three, which stops here. 
Then if I lean forwards again, I've got level two, which goes as far back as that. And then you've got fully upright level one, which stops you from rocking back at all. This is level one, which is personally how I have the chair. Then we've got the headrest. Now for context, I'm about five foot seven, five foot eight. And for all you metric folk out there, I think that's about 175-ish centimetres ish something like that and the headrest lines up perfectly for me and it's a bloody good job as well because well have a look you can't adjust it See, it doesn't matter how hard i pull it's not going anywhere that headrest is locked in firmly you can't you can't put it up you can't put it down you can't take it off which for some might be a bit of a shame but for me, I tend to lean forwards anyway, so I tend not to notice the headrests there regardless. Might be my hunchback of Notre Dame kind of neck thing going on there. But unless you're ridiculously tall, we're talking like well over six foot, I don't think this is going to be a problem for you. You're still going to get a decent amount of head support from this headrest in its current position. It's just a shame it doesn't have a little bit more adjustment, either you know taking it off completely or lifting it up down or having a maybe like a little pillow or something that I could attach onto it for, you know, my hunchback neck, even though, you know, just to fill that void there a little bit. I don't know, something might be nice, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. So then, final thoughts. It's a really nice chair. I'm really happy with it, I'm comfortable. One of the things that often differentiates a chair for me is whether I can cross my legs. Growing up in a British primary school, I spent many an assembly sat on the floor cross-legged and for some reason I never dropped the habit so even though I'm now coming up from my mid-twenties I still sit in chairs cross-legged and I can happily report that this one is more than wide enough for me to sit perfectly cross-legged in the chair without having to remove armrests or anything like that it's definitely something you don't get with all chairs then we just come on to the issue of price at 6.99 I was struggling to justify this chair however with a recent price reduction down to £4.99 for the holiday season, that's a £200 saving, it becomes a much more compelling option. See, this chair isn't trying to compete necessarily with the likes of Secret Labs. They are specifically gaming chairs. This chair starts to blur the line between gaming chair and office chair. On the side, you've got gaming chairs with this sleek gamer aesthetic, but on the office chair side, you've got the ergonomics and comfort which support long play sessions. And this sits firmly in the middle of the two keeping that aesthetic, but also bringing in a history of ergonomic design and comfort, which they've produced with their senator chairs for the last 50 years. The only real competition to this in my mind is the Herman Miller Vantam gaming chair, but that sells for significantly more than this, not far off double its current sale price. And so really it's a no brainer in my eyes. If you're looking at the Herman Miller and thinking you can't justify the price, this chair from Cyber, might just be your next best option. The only concern I had left was reliability. And if you're anything like me, before the SI1, you'd never even heard of Cyber. And that's because they're brand new to the game. They've never made a gaming chair before. But that's okay. It's not as big of a deal as you might think because they're actually part of a wider company called Senator and they definitely have made chairs before. In fact, they've been making luxury office furniture since the 1970s, which in my eyes is more, enough, more than enough experience to be making gaming chairs like this one. And they've gone one step further by providing a five year warranty. And so then, if you did find this review helpful, be sure to hit like and maybe leave a comment down below letting me know, is this a chair that you have? Is it a chair you're thinking of picking up like this? Or is it a chair that maybe you've got some questions about it? I don't know. Whatever it is, leave a comment, your thoughts, your feelings, leave it down below. Let me know what you think of this video. And perhaps you might see more content like this on the channel coming up shortly. Anyway, guys, hope you did enjoy and I will see you in the next one.